In order to localize where an infarct may be, which will come up on boards and what you will see guide management on wards, we need to have an understanding of ECG leads. This will be the first part of our lecture. Once we understand leads and what they tell us, there is almost zero memorization involved. There is no need to memorize anything to determine where an infarct is on an EKG printout. By the way, I'll use EKG and ECG interchangeably. All you need is an understanding of leads and some basic anatomy. So let's start with our leads here. There are three types of leads. The first type are limb leads. The second type are augmented leads. And the third type are our precordial or chest leads. We use these leads in order to have a look at the heart. Our limb leads and our augmented leads will give us a frontal or coronal view of the heart. So a frontal view would look like this. Let's say this patient's head. So a frontal view would look like this. Let's just draw it from the side so it makes more sense. And from the side, it will look like this. Okay. So this is our frontal or coronal view. And this is how the limb leads and augmented leads will look at the heart. It'll take a cross section that looks like this. Okay. Now our precordial leads will look at the heart in a transverse or horizontal view. So from the front, it would look like this. And from the side, it would look like this. So this is our transverse view. And this is our frontal view. And then here is our transverse view, and here is our frontal view. The heart isn't two-dimensional, obviously, so we need these views to look at the electrical activity of the heart in a three-dimensional way. So we'll talk about the limb leads first, and then we'll get to the augmented leads, and we'll finish the first part of this series talking about the precordial leads. So let's start with the limb leads. In order to produce the limb leads, we place electrodes on the right and left wrists and on the ankles. So all these models are actually the same person. I just drew three different models because we will produce three different leads and I wanted it to be tidy and neat. And you'll understand why in a second. So let's start with lead one. So the limb leads will actually be designated by Roman numerals. So we'll draw limb lead one here. We'll draw limb lead two here and we'll draw limb lead three here. So how do we create lead one? We create lead one by making the left arm positive and the right arm negative. What this does is that you're actually comparing the electrical potential differences between the positive end and the negative end, and this will create a lead. This is your lead. So this will be your EKG machine, I guess, just imagine that it is, and you have the right arm, the left arm rather, connected to the positive end and the right wrist connected to the negative end. And I should note that the right ankle will always be your ground. Now you can see why I drew three different models because this can get kind of messy. So the angle of orientation for lead one will be zero degrees. Angles of orientation are made by connecting the negative to the positive electrodes, creating this imaginary line or lead. Now remember, we didn't use the electrode on the left leg here. However, it's still on this model because it's the same exact person. Now lead 2 is created by making the legs positive. Obviously, this is still ground. So the left leg is positive and the right arm is negative. And so this creates our imaginary line or lead. So let's say we have an EKG machine here. Positive end, negative end. The EKG machine denotes what's positive and what's negative, not you. So you just place the electrodes on the right spots. So left leg goes to the positive end, and the right arm goes to the negative end. And this will create lead 2. Now lead 2's angle of orientation will be 60 degrees. And we'll get to this in just a second. Don't get confused by the angles of orientation right now. We will get to it. And then finally, we have lead 3. So let's draw our electrode. I mean the... <laughs> EKG machine, positive end, negative. Lead 3 is created by making the legs positive. So the left leg is positive, and the left arm will be negative. And of course, we have our ground. So our lead would look like this. 
and its angle of orientation will be 120 degrees. The angle of orientation is the angle at which the heart is viewed, or rather the heart's electrical conduction system, and it's always viewed from the positive pole. So let's look at lead one, okay? Because the positive pole is on the left arm, you're looking at the heart from the left. So let's just draw, so pretend this is an eye. So you're looking down from the positive pole. So what do you see if you look at the heart in this direction? So you're looking at the heart in this direction. What do you see? You see the left lateral side of the heart. Left lateral wall of the heart. We will get more into this later. So think of, so think of it as drawing an eye on the positive pole and looking down a lead. Right? So we could do this with lead two as well. Our eye would be here. So this is how we would view the heart. And then from the positive pole, again, we draw our eye. And this is how we would view our heart. Now, the angles of orientation might make a little sense now, right? Imagine if you had a protractor where this is 90 degrees. This would be 60 degrees. If you had a protractor, this would be 120 degrees. And this would obviously be your 0 degrees, correct? Now, let's put it all together. If we combine all these leads, we form an equiangular triangle, also known as Eindhoven's triangle. Because it's equiangular, that means each angle inside the triangle is 60 degrees. Now, obviously, this would be the positive end, this would be the negative, this is lead 1. Positive end, negative end, 60 degree orientation, lead 2. Let's look at the leads quickly to just see if they match up, right? Lead 1, we have, is right here. Lead 2, 60 degrees, right? And it's also at a 60 degree angle. And then finally, for lead 3, we have positive, right? Positive left foot, negative left wrist, 120 degrees. This is our lead 3. So this is what's called the Eindhoven Triangle. By the way, these leads are also called bipolar leads. Our limb leads are actually also called bipolar leads. Why are they called bipolar leads? Because they are the only leads that use two electrodes that we place ourselves. This will make a bit more sense later, so stay with me. Now, to represent the cardiac electrical activity in the Eindhoven's triangle, we can draw these leads so that they can intersect each other through a common point, but keeping their original orientation. So they still keep their angle of orientation, but they'll intersect at a common point. So this is a torso. So let's say this is a cross-section of the heart, left ventricle, atria. Okay. Now, let's make them intersect the heart. So this would be lead 3, still at a 120 degree angle, the negative end here, the positive end here. Now, lead 2, which is at a 60 degree angle, would go here, positive end, negative end, and then lead 1 will be here, 0 degrees, right? So we have the positive end here and the negative end here. Lead 3, 120 degrees, lead 2 will be 60 degrees. As you can see, Leads 2 and lead 3, they look at the heart inferiorly. Remember what I said? Positive pole down, right? So we have the eye. This is how it's viewed. An eye, because this is the positive pole. This is the positive pole. This is how it's viewed. Lead 1, this is how it's viewed, okay? So what do we see? Again, leads 2 and 3 look at the heart inferiorly. And lead 1 looks at the heart laterally. Always look towards the negative side from the positive end. And we already know lead 1 looks at the heart from the left side. So let's take a look at this again. The EKG machine isn't actually measuring all these leads. All the EKG needs to actually measure are leads 1 and 2. If it measures lead 1 and measures lead 2, it can find lead 3. How does it do that? Using Eindhoven's law, which is lead 1 plus lead 3 is equal to lead 2. And we know this law to be true due to Kirchhoff's voltage law, not current voltage law. In other words, the sum of the potential differences, because we said before that a lead is actually the potential difference between 
one electrode and the other electrode. So in lead one, it would be the difference between the positive and the negative here, right? That's the potential difference, and that's what creates our lead. Now, the sum of the potential differences, also known as our voltages, around any closed loop is zero. This is Kirchhoff's voltage law. We created a closed loop with Eindhoven's triangle, and we could go in either direction. We could actually go from the positive to the negative end, or the negative to the positive end. So let's go from the positive to negative, positive to negative, going down our loop, and then this is negative to positive, right? So it's lead one, plus we want to flip lead two, so we do a negative of lead two. So we keep going down, and then plus lead three equals zero, according to Kirchhoff's voltage law. So this is why Eindhoven's law works, right? So now we just flip it, and we get this, lead one plus three equals lead two. What does this actually mean? Well, let's look at a practical example. So let's look at this EKG. So the R wave in lead one looks to be about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten small boxes. And the R wave in lead three looks to be about three small boxes. And so using Eindhoven's law, which is lead one plus lead three equals lead two, adding ten plus three, we would assume that the R wave in lead two will give us thirteen small boxes and does it. So 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. What do you know? 13 small boxes. So that's how it works. And this gives us an opportunity to see where the leads are that we just talked about on an EKG printout. So this would be lead 1, this would be lead 2, and this would be lead 3. Okay, we are one third of the way there. Next, we will do our augmented leads. So just to summarize really quickly, we have three types of leads. We have limb leads. We have augmented leads. And we have our precordial or chest leads. So we already talked about our limb leads, and let's just draw our limb leads in a triaxial system. So let's draw a circle here. Okay, now let's attempt to draw a heart here. Let's draw our beefy left ventricle. So our limb leads, this would be lead one, and this would probably be the center. So lead two would go here. Lead three would go here. So lead two and lead three. Lead two is 60 degrees. Lead three is 120 degrees. And lead one is zero degrees. So we have our what's called a triaxial system here, right? Now the reason we have our augmented leads or why the augmented leads were created, which is the next set of leads we're going to talk about, is because we need more leads since there's too much of a gap between the leads we already have. These 60 degree gaps are just way too large. And this is all information that we're not getting. So in order to gather more information, we need the augmented leads. So that's what Goldberger gave us. So Goldberger's leads, also known as augmented leads, are AVR, AVL, and AVF. So just like we had three limb leads, we're going to have three augmented leads. And this is them. A stands for augmented, V stands for voltage, and R stands for right, L stands for left, F is for foot. So how do we fill those gaps? Well, let's draw our three models again. Obviously, I didn't get any better at drawing them. I might have even gotten worse. So we use the same electrodes as before, right? Nothing changes. So these six models that I drew, three here and then three for the limb leads, it's all the same patient using the same electrodes thus far. That changes when we get to the precordial leads then we add more electrodes. But right now, it's the same electrodes that we're using. These three models, same person. The six models, these three, and the six, and the other three here, rather, same person. The same exact electrodes that were placed, they're not moved, just the EKG machine is doing different calculations, performing different calculations. So with Goldberger's leads, one lead is chosen to be positive, and the other two, the average of the other leads, are considered to be negative. Again, this is so convenient because we can get more slices of the heart without having to attach more electrodes. 
Now, explaining why they are augmented isn't really relevant unless you're an electrical engineer, but something needs to be done or quote-unquote augmented to the leads in order to increase the signal and hence the term augmented. So let's start with AVL. How do we get AVL? Well, we said we make one electrode positive and the average of the other two negative. So with AVL, we make the left arm positive and the average of the other two will be negative. So let's make our little EKG machine here, positive end, negative end. So the positive end will go here, and then the negative end attached to a resistor will go here. Now AVL is created by making the left arm positive, right, and the other limbs negative. And of course, our right ankle, still a ground. You need a ground. Now remember, L is for left, so that's why we made the left arm positive. And so the angle of orientation, the average of the other two electrodes, points to the positive electrode. We create our imaginary line, which is our lead, and this angle of orientation is negative 30 degrees. Now we're going to do AVR. R right, so our right arm here is positive. So let's draw our little... So we designated our right arm positive. That means we take the average of the other two and we make them negative. So we attach to a resistor here and make them negative. And this is positive, of course, always our ground. And now we're going to draw our lead from the average of the negative towards the positive. And the angle of orientation for AVR will be negative 150. Okay, so we made the right arm positive and the other limbs negative. Okay, finally, let's take a look at AVF. So how is AVF created? It's by making the legs positive and the other limbs negative, right? F is for foot, positive, and then the other limbs, this is the ground, and the other limbs negative. So resistor, resistor, connected. Can't forget our EKG machine, positive, negative, positive, negative. So AVF will be towards the positive and the angle of orientation will be 90 degrees. So now let's add these augmented leads to our triaxial system and make it a hexaxial system. Again, remember, this is all in the frontal plane. This is all on the same plane, all on the coronal plane. So now we could fill in some empty spaces using our augmented leads. So between lead two and three, we got another slice on the frontal plane, and that is AVF. I'll write it in a second. And then we made our AVL here, and we also made our AVR here. So our AVL is negative 30 degrees. Our AVF is 90 degrees. And our AVR, which is negative 150 degrees. Same exact slices, right? Let's compare. AVL, negative 30 degrees, goes this way, and we see the same thing here. AVL, negative 30 degrees, this is the positive end, oriented this way, right? Oriented in this direction. AVF is oriented in this direction, AVR is oriented in this direction. Towards the positive end, lead two, Towards the positive end, lead three to the positive end. We look at AVR, negative 150 degrees, right? Oriented in this direction. We go up to our hexaxial system, AVR. And then same thing with AVF, pointed downwards. You can see it right here at 90 degrees, and you see this here as well. So we filled in a bunch of gaps, and this becomes our hexaxial system. So just by looking at this, if I asked you what leads can view the lateral surface of the heart. What leads can view the left lateral surface of the heart? Well, you could tell me right away, right? It's AVL and it's 1. So 1 and AVL view the left lateral surface of the heart. If I ask you which leads view the apex, the inferior portion of the heart, the part of the heart that's on the diaphragm, what would you tell me? It would be leads 2, 3, and AVF. Now, poor old AVR, it's the forsaken child that no one cares about even though it does have some clinical relevance but it won't to you at this stage just know that AVR is electrically opposite to leads 1 2 and AVL so it's electrically opposite to leads 1 2 and AVL right so there you go you're, you're beginning to understand that 
you don't need to memorize which lead is lateral, which lead is inferior. All you have to do is think about it and you'll know. Now we aren't done because we're still missing our precordial or chest leads. So like I mentioned previously, the EKG machine is able to just calculate the leads. All the EKG machine needs are two leads and it can figure out the rest. And because Goldberger's leads, the augmented leads, use the same electrodes, we can have equations for the augmented leads as well. We already know from Eindhoven's law, we talked about this previously, is lead 1 plus lead 3 is equal to lead 2. And using this equation, we, can, we only need two leads. We only need lead 1 and lead 3, and we get lead 2, or lead 1 and lead 2, or whatever, right? We only need two leads to get the third lead. And the same is true for the augmented leads. Now, you don't need to memorize these equations, but just so you understand that the EKG machine, all it's doing is calculating. Just by knowing lead 1 and lead 2, it then forms the augmented leads. It calculates the augmented leads. So AVR, again, no need to memorize this, negative 1 half times the sum of lead 1 and lead 2. AVL is equal to 1 minus half of lead 2. AVF is equal to 2 lead 2 minus the half of lead 1. So just by calculating, just by recording rather, lead 1 and lead 2, you get the rest of the augmented leads. By the way, the addition, the sum of all the augmented leads is equal to 0. Keep in mind that the EKG is performing these calculations in real time. These aren't static calculations. So the heart is 3D, right? Obviously. But we only talked about leads in one plane so far, the frontal plane. Well, we need more information, more parts of the heart, and that's where our chest also known as precordial leads come in. And that's what we will talk about next. Again, just to summarize, we have our leads. These include our limb leads, augmented leads, and our chest leads, also known as our precordial leads. We talked about our limb leads and how we get them. We talked about our augmented leads and how we get those. Now we're going to talk about how we acquire our chest leads. Both the limb and the augmented leads we're in the frontal plane. They gave us information only from one plane, the frontal plane. Our chest leads, however, will give us information from the transverse or horizontal plane. And these are the only planes we get to see the heart in, right? Transverse and frontal. That's it. We had three limb leads, three augmented leads, and we're going to have six chest leads. Three plus three plus six. That gives us 12, and that is our 12 lead EKG. That's how we get our 12 leads. We had three leads, and then we added another three to get our hexaxial system. And now we're going to add six chest leads. This is our conventional 12 lead EKG that you'll be tested on and see on awards. You may also see a 15 lead EKG, but this is out of our scope for now. I'll reference it a bit later while talking about the infarct locations. Now these six precordial leads, they're called precordial, by the way, because the electrodes are right in front of the heart. Consist of V1 through V6, and you should know how they're placed, even though you might not be the one placing them. So let's draw our clavicles here and here, our manubrium. Siphoid process. Actually, it needs to be a little bit longer as our foot process. So these six chest leads. They're going to be called V1, V2, V3, and so on till V6, okay? Now, where is V1 placed? V1 is placed in, let's just draw ribs here. So V1 is placed in the fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternum. Just to the right of the sternum, V1 goes here. V2 is placed in the fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum. So V2 goes here. So you skip V3. And you place V4 first. V4 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. So middle of the clavicle, you go down, fifth intercostal space. So let's put it here. And this is our V4. V3, you'd place between V2 and V4. So V3 goes here. Now you skip V5 and place V6. Now V6 is placed on the same intercostal space as V4, which is the fifth intercostal space, but it's placed on the mid-axillary line. So mid-axillary, V6, and then V5 goes also in the fifth intercostal space, but between V4 and V6, 
and then v5 goes here. So this is how you place your chess leads, and there are six of them, as you can see here. So how do we make leads from these electrodes? So obviously, to make any lead, to create any lead, we need a positive and negative pole. In this case, we have a central terminal. That is, we connect the three limb electrodes. Let me just draw really quickly one of our models. And we only need one for this. We don't need three, because I'm not going to draw everything this time. Wow, this is... <laughs> I get worse as I go on. So let's just draw our little EKG machine. So this is still ground, right? The right leg still ground. Now we already placed these electrodes on the patient before, and we're going to use them again. We connect these three electrodes and make it a negative pole. So connect to resistor, to resistor, to resistor and we connect them to the negative pole. And then our chest leads that are here, V1, V2, each one will be connected to a positive pole. When we take these three limb electrodes and we designate it as our negative pole, this is more specifically called Wilson's central terminal. And it provides us with a theoretical reference point right about in the middle of the thorax or the middle of Eindhoven's triangle, which we drew previously, so we make so we make our precordial leads positive. So these are all, all going to be positive. And then we're going to have Wilson's central terminal negative. So let's say this is Wilson's central terminal. This is negative. And then V1 is positive. V2 is positive. V3 is positive. These are all new leads. V4 is positive. V5 is positive. V6 is positive. So this is what it would look like. Again, this is on the transverse plane. Now let's look at a 3D model so it's understood a little bit better. So let's look at this 3D model. So we have our precordial leads here labeled for you, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. Uh, in this model, we have our V7, V8, V9 as well. I made it white because these leads aren't part of our 12 lead EKG, our conventional 12 lead EKG. So for right now, you'll Understand its purpose once we get to infarcts. I'll talk about it a little bit, uh, localizing an infarct rather. I'll reference it and I'll talk about it a little bit. But for now, all you need to know is we have our precordial leads or our chest leads here. We have our augmented leads, AVR, AVL, and AVF. And we have our limb leads, lead 2, lead 3, and lead 1. Now we're going to go back to our 3D model in a second. I just want to explain something on a 2D plane. Let's just take a transverse cross section right here. And this will be our vertebral body and spinous process and transverse. Okay. And let's draw our heart. It would be like this. So Wilson's central terminal be around here. And of course, this is our negative pole. And our V1 would go here, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. These will each be our positive poles. Now, what does this picture show us? Let's look at the orientation of the heart first. The right ventricle, which is here, is anterior and medial. And the left ventricle, which is here, is posterior and lateral. So the right ventricle and left ventricle. This is so you can better understand what V1 through V6 will represent. When you look at an EKG with the precordial leads V1 through V6, which part of the heart does V1 through V6 show? Now because of the orientation of the heart, V1 and V2 are septal, V3 and V4 are anterior, and V5 and V6 are lateral. So septal leads are V1 and V2, anterior leads are V3 and V4, and lateral leads are V5 and V6. Now why? Well, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Remember the I? The I is always on the positive pole. So the I here sees this. The I sees this. 
the I for V4 sees this, the I for V3 sees this, the I for V2 sees this, the I for V1 sees this. Get it? This is why V1 and V2 are septal, V3, V4 is anterior. Now these, these are just a conventional names. V5 and V6 are lateral. And now when we look at the 3D version, you'll understand why V1, right here it's written septal, V1 and V2, V3 and V4 are your anterior and V5 and V6 are your lateral leads. Again, they're all your chest leads, they're all your precordial leads. So, we don't actually need to memorize anything to figure out where our leads are. We just have to understand our leads. We have our leads in the frontal plane, right? We see the frontal plane here, right? You see the frontal plane? And we see our transverse plane. This is our transverse, this is our frontal plane. Transverse are our chest leads, or precordial leads, and frontal are our limb leads and our augmented leads. If we want to know what the inferior leads are, 2, 3, AVF, if we want to know what our lateral leads are, 1, AVL, V5, and V6. Septal leads, V1, V2, anterior leads, V3, and V4. How easy is that? So now we could actually figure out how an Apple Watch works. Let's do that, and this will be the end of this lecture. So how does an Apple Watch get an EKG tracing? So this is the Apple website. This is the Apple Watch that can record an EKG. So how does it record it? This is your first clue. Hold your finger on the crown. The crown is right here. Place your finger on the crown. This is a finger. So you place your finger on the crown. So what happens? You're wearing the EKG on your wrist, right? Wear the watch on your wrist, and then you place your finger on the crown, the finger of your other hand, obviously. So what lead does this create? Now let's draw our favorite model here. Clearly didn't get better at drawing him. But that's okay. And this model has a really cool Apple Watch. And the back plate of this Apple Watch is detecting electrical activity. The back of this watch detects electrical activity. And wouldn't you know, it gives us our left electrode. So how do we get our right electrode? They ask you to put your finger on the crown. The finger that is used will be on the opposite hand, the opposite arm. This will be your right electrode. Now, can you guess what lead it's making? It's making lead one. Angle of orientation, zero degrees. Why can't it get the other leads, right? Because we said, well, the EKG machine calculates all the leads, but you need at least two to get the third. You need at least two to get the augmented leads. If you're only recording the electrical activity from the left arm and the right arm, you're only getting one lead. There is no way to calculate lead two, lead three. You can't calculate AVR, AVL, AVF. You can't count, and of course, obviously not the chest leads. But you can't calculate the other five leads using just one lead. So all it's recording is lead one. Now, if you note here, it says no, Apple Watch never checks for heart attacks. So you have, if you have a heart attack in the inferior part of the heart, 2-3 AVF, lead one won't pick it up, right? So the Apple Watch, doesn't, it doesn't make sense for it to check for heart attacks because it just doesn't have that capability. Let's look at the Cardia Mobile. Now, there's also another device called the Cardia the Cardia Mobile. The Cardia Mobile has, they sell two. One that does one lead and one that does six leads. Now, how can it get six leads? You place a finger here and here, right? Sort of the same idea as the Apple Watch. You get lead one, zero degree angle of orientation. As if it's the right arm and the left arm, you create a lead. Now, the Cardia Mobile 6, how does it do that? Now, how does it get the second lead that's missing? So what they do... So we have a positive end here, and we have our negative end here, right? Positive pole, negative pole, what do we do? Get lead one. This gives us lead one, angle of orientation zero degrees. Because of Eindhoven's law, we only need another lead to calculate the third lead, the third limb lead. Because of the augmented equations that I showed you for AVR, AVL, and AVF, the augmented lead equations, all you need is two leads to get the augmented leads. Now, how do we get lead two, for instance? We just placed positive pole here, negative pole here, created a lead. Okay, how do we get another? 
this machine is being placed on the leg. There's actually a sensor on the bottom that picks up the electrical activity. So now we have a lead or an electrode as if an electrode is placed on the left leg. So let's just draw a person here. This time it doesn't have a neck, but that's okay. So we have an electrode here, an electrode here, and because the device is placed on the leg, get an electrode here. Therefore, we just don't have lead one, we can also get lead two. We can calculate third lead, and we can calculate AVR, AVL, and AVF using the equations we talked about. This gives us six leads. And therefore, they can say, hey, look, this is a six lead EKG. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching. In the next lecture, we'll talk about how to actually localize an infarct. This was just an important step in order to determine how to actually localize an infarct. This is a necessary step. Before you start studying EKGs, this is something that must be understood. And with that, I'll end the lecture. If you want to support this channel, please see the description and any support will result in your name being in the end credits. If you don't have the ability to support, liking, commenting, and subscribing is more than helpful. And see you for part two.